where Jesus takes us. Oh Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you so much for everything we are learning, Father. I was just listening to people around the tables, Lord, and how their minds have just been so radically changed, Father. And expecting not to try and get somewhere, but to really know that you've placed us. And I pray right now, Father, as I speak, that you will really just continue building on that in terms of having a relationship with you in a new and a living way, Father. Lord, I pray that you will come and touch us in such a real way that we will know, that we know, that we will never be the same again. Father, I want to come and break this yoke that has been upon your church, upon your people right now. I break this yoke over them, and I set them free in Jesus' name. I set you free in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. I break fear over you. I set you free from fear in Jesus' name. We don't have to fear anything because we are love. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and praise you for that. I was just so excited, Father, to hear what Mark said and he, he took some of the words out of my mouth because Jesus is here. And, and we just want to thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, we're going to follow the manual a little bit. For you who have a manual. And uh, my wife normally says, have you prepared? I'm like, no. <laughs> I am prepared. Oh, that's right. I live prepared. Yeah. I can't come here and prepare for something. I'm still late. So um, we live prepared and we, we start to, to know Jesus in the place. And I want to, in this next session, really take you on a journey to get to know Jesus in a very personal way. In a very, very personal way. Um, I love sharing experiences. I'm not sharing it because I think I'm something. I'm trying to say, wow, look at how great this is. I share from experiences because you can say, wow. I've also experienced that. And you can learn from your mistakes and you can learn, wow, I've also experienced that. That's Jesus. I didn't know it was Jesus. All right, to set you free. Hallelujah. I just pray for my eyes, Mark. I want to see perfectly in my man. Be healed. In Jesus' name. That's right. We're looking at hearing the voice of God. In the Old Testament, God used prophets to talk for him. So he needed a person who could hear for him and then go to the people and tell the people what he said. But since I started to get to know God, I realized the purpose of the prophet is very different in the New Testament. The purpose for the prophet in the New Testament is to help you to all hear for yourself. Amen. That's the biggest one. If I can get you no longer to need me to hear for you, I've done my job. That's really what God wants us to do. Each of you have to hear Jesus for yourself. And He has led me, He has taught me everything I know. He's even led me to the truth that I didn't know about. I think it was in 2012, I had a dream. And uh, in my dream I heard this voice speak from the sky. And I knew it was Smith Wigglesworth. And I woke up and I said, Smith Wigglesworth. I've heard of the guy. Who knows about Smith Wigglesworth? Yeah. I've heard of the guy. I've never studied his life, but I've heard of him. It's actually a shame how we don't know about these people. I've asked a lot of people. They don't know about these mighty men that has lived. They were not mighty. They were just living their identity in Christ. Yeah, Anyways, I woke up and I said, Jesus, what are you saying to me? He says, we're going on to Smith Wigglesworth. No thank you. <laughs> That's what I said. No thank you. Because Smith Wigglesworth kicked babies of stages and he did radical stuff. But he got healed. Yeah. But he knew who he was in Christ. And he was such a bold guy that I'm like, no, that's not me. I, I don't want to be like Smith Wigglesworth, thank you. But God didn't come to tell me. He came to, not come and ask me, he came to tell me. Because he knew there was a journey on its way. That was in 2012. So two days after that, 
I was given a book. And it was called God's Journey. And in this book, on my birthday, which I was given, all these mighty men were in this book. And as I started reading about their lives, I was so amazed about their lives. You must go and read this book. You don't have faith. You believe, oh, can we still do this? It was done a long time ago. It's been done. John G. Lake was here in South Africa for five years. And I think on record, 100,000 people were here. Wherever he went, people were here. That's in the last three years, or since I know the truth, I've seen more than 100 people stop camping. More than 100 people get here. And um, I want to share some testimony about hearing God's voice. Sometimes we say, well, maybe you heard God. Maybe you think you heard God. Maybe you, you're some fright. Who's ever wondered, the guy says he hears God's voice, and you think, oh, no, I'm not so sure. Okay. Sometimes I've known, I wasn't sure. Sometimes I've known that I wasn't sure. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was there, and I, and I want to know, God, do you still speak to us? Do you really want to speak to me? Now, the way God speaks in the New Testament, Mark is dealt with something else. I'm not going to deal with that now. He speaks from within. He doesn't speak from without. And I was in a church, and as I was worshipping at that stage, a voice spoke to me. And he said, within three days you'll get a job, and before the end of the month you will start working. Now by that time I had an engineering degree, and there was four years of not being able to get a job, for four years. Yeah. And because of the RDP in South Africa and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Of course they didn't know my identity, otherwise I would have come out it, and it would have happened. But uh, anyway, so there was no chance of getting a job in three days. From that moment on, there was no CV even out. I wasn't even looking for a job. Four years had passed by. And I heard it right here. I will show you when you hear. I heard it right here in my spirit. I didn't hear it in my mind. I heard it right here. As I'm going, I'm going to give you scriptures because the experiences which I had, I didn't learn from scripture. I learned from experiences. I read the scripture like, whoa, now I understand the scripture. I had experiences first. And experiences confirm scripture. Now you can use your experiences to justify yourself and try to interpret the scriptures away. But I've actually got illumination. I believe that's another reason for the prophet is to bring illumination to the scripture, which was lost to the church. So, well, that was Sunday. I didn't go look for a job. I didn't even try to go looking for a job. So God said it. I'm like, oh, if it's God, it will happen. Monday, nothing happens. Tuesday, I was driving on the Petersburg Highway out here, Minden, on the way to Minden. I was praying in tongues in that stage and praying in tongues and speaking to Jesus. And a car came past us on the highway. And the Lord spoke again from here and he says, That guy in that car is going to give you a job. We're both driving on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what I'm telling you is, God's not always logic. So, I was like, There's somebody else up there. <laughs> so, well, my natural tendency now, I've taught myself, I've trained myself, as Mark said. I've, over years, trained myself. I'm so obedient to the Spirit. If He tells me this, I do it immediately, without thinking. Immediately. And I've seen amazing things happen. So, I, at that stage, I was like, okay, well, all I know is the truth. So, I chased this guy yeah. on the highway. And I'm coming next to him, and I'm trying to wave at him and try to get his attention. Came in front of him. And no, I can't slow down because I think I'm going to hijack him. Yeah. So my off-ramp came and I went on the off-ramp. And as I looked at my rear mirror, by God's grace, the guy came off on the same off-ramp. And at the green uh, traffic light, I just stopped at the green traffic light. <laughs> there was no other cars, so I saw there was no car, so I was just waiting for him to come up his off-ramp. So I stopped at the green traffic light, and when he came there, it was red for him. So he had to stop next to me. That's a lot of faith, right? That's a lot of action from the voice that you heard. I just had to test it. Maybe it was God. Maybe it wasn't. So anyway, he stood next to me, and as I looked at him, I recognized him from 20 years ago in primary school. A little bit older than me. I remember his name. I said, hey, Billy, how are you, man? He said, oh, good, man. You can't say much in the traffic light. Yeah. I said, listen, don't you have a job for me, man? I'm like, what job? I said, well, I'm a chemical engineer. I'm looking for a job as a chemical engineer. He 
These are all my brothers that can be doing to them. Next miracle. And we drove over to Price Waterhouse Coopers and we exchanged telephone numbers and I drove home. Drove home. So four o'clock that evening I thought, well the next step is if I'm gonna have a job in three days, which is tomorrow, I better do something about this number now. So I found him and I found his and he says, Listen, I spoke to my brother, he says you must find him. I found his brother, he says, It's amazing, we're looking for somebody for an interview, would you come in tomorrow morning? Mm-hmm. On the third day. I had three interviews, and in the three interviews, before the end of the month, as the voice said, you will do the job. And I started looking for them. That was my introduction to the voice of God. Wow. Now, you think that's real? That is like, God did that with a reason to tell you, I can speak. But then he went another step further. You give God a pinky to grab the hand. Be ready for that. He's, he's so eager for you. He loves you so much. But if you want to give one step to him, you will run ten steps towards you. We have this mindset, oh God's like, you, know, you can't come close to me. No. You know that story about the, the father that was waiting for the lost son? He says he was waiting, he was sitting there. And when he saw him, what did he do? He ran towards him. He didn't say, oh, you're sinning, you came back. No, just prove yourself first. <laughs> no, he ran and he, he hugged him and he said, my son, you're back. And that's what I want you to understand about God's love for you. That's the first thing. Before you even know God's in you and loves you, you have to know he loves you. Hallelujah. So I went on my interview that morning, going for my interview after three days now. And that morning I had laryngitis in my throat. Wow! I didn't have laryngitis yesterday. And uh, so I realized, well, something is trying to stop me from this interview. Satan was always there. So my voice was a little bit gone, and I, and I said, laryngitis, get out! That was 16 years ago. <coughs> And as I said, get up, I was immediately healed. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. Whoop, came back. Yes. You must understand, what you speak is what you get. Yes. And as I realized this, I'm like, whoa, I just said, I said, Lord, forgive me, forgive me. But that was a new experience for me. Because I came from a non-Pentecostal background. None of these things were in my background. So for me to have these things to happen was strange as can be. Anyway. So I'm trying to get laryngitis out, and I'm now fighting this thing, and I went to the interview. Awesome interview. Amazing things happen. And on the way back from the interview, I'm praying in tongues. And as I'm praying in tongues, I, I want to tell you how the Holy Spirit will teach you. He wants to teach you. The Bible says He will lead you into all truth, and He will teach you. He's in you, and you will know all things. And I want to show you how He's actually working to bring you to all things that is in you. He's done, he's taken 16 years in my life. And uh, anyway, so uh, on the way back, I'm praying in tongues for God to just get the sickness out. I'm praying and praying. And as I'm going up from Midrand onto the off ramp on the other side of Mendon now, suddenly the Holy Spirit said, Stop, pray in tongues and think what you're saying. I'm, like, I'm blonde, I'm a man, I can't do two things at the same time. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to think, How am I going to do this? You know, who, who prays in tongues? Who can pray in tongues? Who wants to pray in tongues? Amen. We'll pray for you. And uh, so as I'm praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit says, stop praying in tongues and think what you're saying. That's a good one. And I thought, you know, strange way, in the beginning you're trying to figure these things out in logic. So I said, I'll say Jesus in my mind, and I'll speak in tongues. And as I did this, I heard myself say Yeshua. Very clearly. I heard myself say Yeshua. The Jews call him Yeshua. And I heard Yeshua. It's a massive revelation there. Just in that word. And as I heard this, the power of God fell upon me in the car. That's how it fell to me. Actually, the power of God came out of me. But it fell upon me and my whole body was under fire. And there's a fire coming right now as I speak. Thank you, Jesus. So, I'm like, well, what is this, Lord? He says, I said, this is my, my energy. And I'm like, no, this is the Holy Spirit, God said. So I was an engineer. I was experiencing these things. So remember in the Bible it says that power went out of Jesus? So this is the power. 
wow, okay, cool. That's how I learned. And uh, so I'm praying in tongues, and I'm now suddenly starting to think as I'm praying in tongues. But I wasn't thinking this with my own thinking. It just started to follow. And suddenly the gift of interpretation of tongues started. And I heard myself think the strangest thing. Now, if you hear this, you will think, this is crazy. I wasn't thinking this. I heard myself say, write your name in heaven, that Victoria can know Jesus is God. That's what I heard. Wow. How do you write your name in heaven? How do you pray a prayer like that? That's what I heard. And then I heard the Holy Spirit calling angels to do things, and that's all I knew. And, and I just go, oh, I can still remember the words. These are the same words, Tom. And I was driving to my parents' house, and as I came to my parents' house, I felt somebody say to me, look up into the sky. And I stopped the car, and as I stopped the car, written with clouds was a capital letter J hanging in the sky. There was no other clouds. There was just a capital letter J hanging in the sky. Which half an hour ago, I prayed in tongues and I heard the interpretation of the tongue. So God wants to activate us in all these gifts that is already in you. All of them. Gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, healing, everything is there. My purpose as the prophet is to activate that in you. First of all, my faith and to start understanding, wow, God wants a relationship with me. He wants to reveal these things to me. So as, as I'm seeing this, I'm totally overwhelmed. I'm like, I'm like Peter. I'm like, God, just go away from me. I'm a sinful man. I'm like, really, I'm really righteous. I'm like, God, go away from me. And I'm on my knees down there. And Monas, black guy that's working with me, I call him. I said, Monas, what is that? He said, it's a J. I said, it's a J for Jesus. And the praise of God came upon both of us and we flat on the ground. And while we were flat on the ground, the Holy Spirit spoke to me again. And he says, look up. So I looked up and the J had turned into this position now. And a pedestal came out standing on the J with a man standing on the pedestal with his right hand out to me like this. And he said, come follow me. I'll make you a fish of men. I will send you to all nations of this generation before the end comes. I'll make my eyes your eyes that you can see what I'm seeing. I'll put words in your mouth. And as I'm hearing this in my spirit, I was thinking, am I making this stuff up? Because you're thinking you're going crazy. He drew the eyes in the sky. And then he drew the lips in front of me. The last word he said to me, actually, I'll, the rest I'm going to cut out now, because there's a lot of other things he told me. He said to me, and I will give you the key, which is love. At that stage, I didn't know what it meant. He said, I'll give you the key, which is the key to all keys. It's the lock to unlock everything. If you have that key, you need nothing else, which is love. And he told me that. And as I heard this in my spirit, he drew a three-dimensional key for the clouds. We have an awesome God. Amen. That's the God of Moses, the God of Elijah, the same God that has not changed. That's what I was looking for. And God said, I know what Hendrik was. I'll show him I'm the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. There's a prophecy. I don't, a lot of people don't know about the prophecy. I'm a lot into prophecy. I've got a whole end time website. God, from that time on, he started showing me the end times. I've got 67 hours of DVD on YouTube. And uh, we can't even go into all that now. I've actually stopped telling people about the end times because they think you're crazy. Yeah. But it's come. It's right here. And if I don't speak about it, then I will, I will be lying. Jesus is on his way, but he wants to get his church. There's a verse in uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 23 that says, He must remain in heaven until the full restoration of all things has taken place. What? So he can't come back until the restoration of all things has taken place. Correct. And there's a spirit of Elijah that's going to do that, and that's the spirit of Jesus Christ. This is Jezo in from the place for the children. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? I want to pick your faith up to say your God is alive. Amen. And He wants a relationship with you. 
He wants to talk to us. But he's, that's a big one. That's a massive one. I was like, oh, okay, no, that is just too much. But then he started speaking in small things. And if we start being faithful of small things, we will start getting more accurate in the bigger things. All right. Hallelujah. Lord help us. Where are we going? No clue. <laughs> so, four years went by. And I was starting to train myself to understand, the, to hear the voice of God. And I was doing this, what do you call it, trial and error basis. You think it would? And I'm going to it Now, how do you teach yourself to make sure that you are really hearing? Write down what you think you heard. Mm -hmm. Write down what you dream. Write it down. And as you write it down, what happens is, in an afterthought, after things have happened, you're like, oh, that's what it meant. Now the dream has been interpreted. Now, I, I, I can't say the lion that chased me in that cage was not this cancer trying to eat my son. It's very obvious. God came to warn me, to me before the time. And now I know, from that perspective, that Satan is the one who is my enemy, not God who gave him cancer. You understand? And he loves us. And if we get a wrong perspective, we'll, we'll interpret our dreams wrong also. So, as your perspective of things change, you will interpret things differently. Okay. You're running out of battery power, is that that thing? Yeah. Uh, uh, For white no. cables. Oh. So, four years went by of me training myself to understand this now. Now we're getting back to that beam of last night. And that night I said, Lord, I want the fullness. And at that stage, I was operating in words of knowledge. Now what is words of knowledge? Words of knowledge is where God suddenly gives you things that supernaturally you couldn't have known. So I would sit here and I would start to say, I'm looking at that lady. And as I'm looking at her, I will start to hear things about her life. Because Jesus knows what's going on in her heart. He knows what she needs. He knows exactly what he wants to tell her. And I become an open conduit to flow through a river. Not a dam. That's right. And that's all you become. You become a flow of God's love through you. When, you, good. when you open yourself up. And uh, in the book of Corinthians, it says, Prophecy is to encourage and to build up the church. So that's what happens. As soon as you start to encourage, the flow is there. So try and encourage people more. If you see something amazing about them, tell them. Wow, oh, you know what? You really so much encourage me. I was in the hospital now, and Satan made a big mistake by sending my son to the hospital. I have to be there now six months. I have to be six months, basically three times a week in the hospital. He made a huge mistake. Good. We've already prayed for everybody around me. Because <laughs> all those parents are without hope. All those parents are children. You see the children there? We saw a girl, but she came in there. I'm not walking in the fullness of that. You know, I heard about it. My wife saw it. She had cancer in the eye. The one eye is completely cancerous. She lost her eye. Satan is a, it's a pig, right? It's a, it's a very good word for him. That's an understatement. The stuff that he's doing to hurt people is terrible. Mm -hmm. Go to hospitals and see what Satan does. He's a molester. He's a molester. He's the worst child molester. He's the worst murderer that you can get. And we have, we've said God is doing these things. Mm -hmm. No wonder we couldn't go to our God. It's not him doing it. Amen. It's Satan doing it. The Bible says in John 10, 10, Satan comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I come to give life. That's right. So I'm walking into the beam, so we're getting back to the beam. And as I'm walking in, this white fall around me is like a glorious pillar of fire. Now remember in the Old Testament, the uh, Israelites was having a pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a guy who lived, his name was uh, William Branham. And if William Branham preached, they one day took a photo of him as he was preaching, and there was a pillar of fire standing next to him as he was preaching. 
And uh, so he had a different revelation of Jesus, which is amazing. Uh, God took me a long way via his revelation to bring me to the truth. And uh, so this pillar of fire which I was in was this glory pillar of power. And I was like, whoa, Lord, what is this? And he said, this is my mouth. And as I was sitting here, I said, Lord, I want to I wanna say something to them that will realize love is an awesome, awesome bill. Love is different than you think. Your perspective of love is emotional or as you have had it in this world. Love. Five different loves and all this kind of stuff. But what I experienced was pure, pure power and energy. Pure power and energy. John G. Lake used to speak about um, liquid fire. Liquid fire. One day I was sharing a revelation with a lady I was studying with. I was a Muslim lady, she's now a Christian, I married her and her husband. And I was sharing with her about the revelation of who we are in Christ. And that the commander of the armies of the Lord is in me. Now that is a revelation that Joshua had. He had a man that he saw that standing there, he says, who are you? He said, I'm the commander of the armies of the Lord. Now who is the commander of the armies of the Lord? Jesus Christ. And I said, well, the commander of the armies of the Lord is in me. And I said, if that means the commander is there. Who does he command? Mm. Every angel. Everything possible that can be commanded is commanded by the commander. All right. So I'm walking, I'm telling this revelation to her about this commander, and as we walk out of the house, a ball of liquid energy appears around me. Liquid energy. And I'm looking up, and the Lord draws over the house a picture of the commander. In the clouds, as I'm experiencing it. <laughs> this is not just visions, this is actual experiences. Mm-hmm. And then he drew Elijah there on the one side, just hitting his mantle over the road. It's to say, if you understand who you are in Christ, you can command anything. Mm-hmm. Rivers to open, the rain, it will rain in a while, in Jesus' name. It will be very nice and cooling down, South Africa will be wet, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. So that beam started to teach me an experience to discern something amazing, God's presence. Now in the Old Testament, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, they had a relationship with God. But their relationship was different from what we think. We think of a relationship like, you are here and I am here. But Adam and Eve had a different relationship with God than we think. And we have to change that mindset also. Because we are praying to a God in heaven somewhere, and we're having a relationship with Jesus somewhere outside. And it's not like that. It says they were in the garden, and it's somewhere in the teachings, <laughs> in Genesis chapter 3, and they heard the voice of God walking in the garden. It says the voice of God was walking in the garden, in the King James. Now, how does the voice of God walk? <laughs> it's a strange concept. The other translation says, they heard the presence of God walking in the garden. How do you hear the presence? Are you understand? Yeah. And they hid, they said, we hid because we, we hid from your presence. Because they sinned. Call oh, Shaketa. Oh, I love your presence, Lord. I love his presence. Because that's his love. That's him. It's not just a nice, eerie, peery feeling, it's Jesus. And so the thing I saw was to hear his voice is to discern his presence sometimes. And if I'm sensitive to his presence, I will know where he's going. Now, I was in another school of thought where I was feeling that my anointing could be stolen and all that stuff. And I was always afraid that my anointing was going to be stolen. I'll tell you the truth now. Now I'm in a place where the presence cannot be stolen. I'm now in an abiding place. The other day somebody was telling me, Oh, don't sin, the presence is going to leave. I'm like, No, the presence doesn't leave. Even if you sin. That's right. I've seen the times where I've sinned bad. I've, I've, I've not been a perfect Christian. I've really had a hard way with the Lord. I've sworn at the Lord. I've been angry at Him. I've done a lot of stuff. He never left me. Never left me. That's right. I want to tell you, he will not leave you. 
unless you do it. You will not be enough for you. You will even hit fight for you. Yeah. As long as you will not turn around and say, this is not possible anymore, then God will have to stand back. But He will never do that. That's right. That's good. That's your loving God. Isn't that awesome? So I'm picking you up. Can you feel that love? Can you feel how it's bombarding you with love? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody here with a pain right here in the hip. Quite a pain here in the hip. Who's got a pain here in your hip? Right here. Thank you. Uh, so I feel it. But it's actually, um, my husband has it, but we are one, and now sometimes I get it, but, it's, but there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, that's fine. Let's pray for him. So that's what the Holy Spirit's now doing. So he's now picking up something in the Spirit. I'm teaching you as we go. This is what we call the word of knowledge. All right? So the Holy Spirit is showing me a pain right here in my own body because I've got a spiritual body and I've got the mind of Christ. So Christ knows that there's a pain and what does he want to do? Heal it. So in the name of Jesus, I command that pain to leave your husband completely and never return in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Woo! Come on. He says, God does not come by word, but by power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. The church no longer can just get teaching. And words of just teaching knowledge and knowledge and knowledge. They have to see it by demonstration. Otherwise, it's a dead religion. It's dead. I was thinking about it yesterday. What happened to, and I'm sorry for the Pentecostals, but the Pentecostals had all these nice feelings and all these nice experiences, but they're still dead. They were the claim God, which is the immature God or Christian. Because they didn't know love. Yeah. Right. All right. So I said, Jesus, what is this? And he said to me, this is all the aspects of my love. Mark has touched on it, but I'm going to go into detail. That you've got to understand these aspects. And I said, these aspects, and suddenly at Revelation, the aspects is the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. There's only one fruit. Yeah. Not fruits. Yeah. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now if you go to Corinthians chapter 13, I want us to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You know, me and Mark, I wanted to talk to him about what we're going to talk about here. So we in the end never got to talk about what we're going to talk about. And now the Holy Spirit put us together and we're talking exactly the same language. Isn't that awesome? Confirmation, confirmation. You think the Holy Spirit runs this thing, eh? <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, 22. Okay. I said, oh, I'm just going to read Galatians and I'm going to read Corinthians. It says, But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes, I'm reading from the Amplified. This, this is so awesome. Listen to this. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint, and confidence. Against such things there is no law, we can bring a charge. Alright, then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And that's one fruit that has all those attributes. All right. That's where we're going. That's right. Here we are. Right here. I can't even see the laptop. Put on the light. It's not on the switch. It's only a light on switch. No, thank you very much. That's going to Chapter 13, verse 6. Talk about this. Let's start off with um, verse 4. It says, Love endures long. Oh, we hate that. <coughs> it's patient and kind. Love is never envious or boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful and vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It's not rude. It does not act unbecomingly. Love. God's love in us does not insist on its own right or its own way. 
It's not self-seeking. It's not touchy. It's not fretful. It is not resentful. It does not take account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to suffer wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevails. Love bears up on anything, everything and anything that comes. It's ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. Love never fails. It never fades out or becomes absolute or comes to an end. So, we've read about love before. But if you go with it, through it step by step, you will see the first thing. Love endures long, which we call long-suffering, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Get the next one. It is patient. It says, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is patient, kind, gentle. Now if you go through each one of those fruits, or the fruit in a total, you will see that it actually put together is love. Exactly. It is love. That's right. And we missed the fact because love was one of the things mentioned in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 as part of the fruit. Yeah. So we kind of got confused about love being one part and patience being another part and kindness being another part. But actually if you put it together you see that love, go to 2 Corinthians chapter Sorry, sorry, Colossians. There is a rendering that also puts those things in parentheses. That's why I want to go to yeah. that verse now. It's very good, bro. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. Oh, Jesus. So Jesus is a person, and Jesus is love. And if you're in love, you're in Jesus. And if love is in you, Jesus is in you. That's right. That's as easy as that. It's not a difficult doctrine. There's nothing very high and difficult about it. <laughs> Look at this. Colossians chapter 3 verse 14. Above all these things, put on love. And every five goes, and he says, Enfold yourself with a bond of perfection which binds everything together Completely in ideal harmony. Sure. Sure. So what love does, love takes patience, it takes um, kindness, gentleness, and it binds it all together in complete perfect harmony. And I like the word harmony because there where Jesus says, if two or three are degree in my name, the Amplified says, with two or three of them harmonize together in my name. Harmonize. Again, from an engineering perspective, if you have a, one of these um, stem focus, musicians among us, it has tuning fork. Tuning fork. If you have a tuning fork, it has two two oh. prongs. 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 Okay. And if you hit it against the table, it goes boing. And these two start to harmonize with one another in a perfect frequency between one another. That's the word harmonize. So what it says is that love bolts all these things together in perfect harmonization. So, so peace, patience, long-suffering, gentleness harmonizes together inside of love. Correct. And as soon as you are in love, you harmonize together with love. That's right. Ah, oh, Jesus. It's like taking awesome. the tuning fork and putting it over the other tuning fork. And then it starts all together. together. Mm. Awesome. Yes. That's science. I've explained things to science much better than pastors could do it. I'm an engineer. And I'm a son of God. Amen. Come on. And as I started realizing these things, I'm like, well, that's easy. I just have to harmonize with Jesus. Stop praying, church. Stop trying to do things. Harmonize with Jesus. This is real. There's a guy, and I want to mention his name because everyone's going to follow him now. Uh, he's in India, uh, or Kirby, and he's been living for eight months on nothing but the Holy Spirit. No food, nothing. Just like Moses, 40 days in the presence, 80 days in the presence, without food, without anything. He's living by the Spirit. The Spirit energizes him from inside, 
and it lives by that energy without food. You can live eternally by the presence of God. I had an experience in 2012. Maybe we were in a deliverance ministry, and uh, the intercessors had prayed for an open heaven over the place, and they did something right. Because when I came there, the, the heavens were open. <laughs> There's no such a thing as an open heaven. The heaven has been opened by Jesus. But what the intercessors did, without knowing it, they just brought all of us into a place where we are. Okay. Making us aware of it. And making us aware of it. When I sat down, the only way with the airplane down to Cape Town, I said, Jesus, you promised me six years ago, you're going to make my eyes your eyes, and I can see what you see. And uh, I just said it to him, and I'm flying down to Cape Town. And as I came there at the meeting, I sat down in my chair, and the next moment I was out. I was taken to a, another place. You were taken where you actually are. So I was flying like an eagle out of the spirit, out of the physical realm, out of past the clouds, out into the into space. I'm above the earth. I'm looking at the earth and I'm sitting in above the earth here and I'm like, where the heck am I? What is this place? And as I'm looking this way, I'm looking over time this way, and I'm looking through time this way, and that time's completely standing still. And there's a lot of things that Jesus showed me that day. Too much to share. If you want to go on the website, you can see all the revelation that was there. But as I looked, I was in a glass bowl. I was like, sorry, I was like, glass bowl. This sounds a little bit Hindi, Indies, or whatever, New Age, or whatever. Just don't be afraid. Special. Jesus is showing you something. He loves you so much. So I'm sitting in this bowl, and I said, well, what is this? He says, now you see as I see. Yeah. You see the beginning and the end at the same time. Because I'm outside of time. And now you sit with Isaiah said when he said, God sits above the circle of the earth. And I experienced what Isaiah had experienced 600 years before Christ. Sitting above the circle of the earth. And I was in this eye, and he says, this is my eye. And when you're in that eye, you know all things. I had a dream the other night, and I want to show you how this this works very practically. I'm going to give away a very amazing secret how I'm hearing. You want to hear the secret? Yeah. It's very easy to hear what's going on in anyone's life. I, I know what's going on in everyone's lives all the time. Unfortunately. <laughs> but fortunately. But I don't break you down, I pick you up. I've been in meetings. Every meeting before I go there, most people tell me this is what's going to happen there. This is what's good. This is what's bad. And I would eat the chicken and spit out the bones. And I've learned and learned and learned. And now I'm here where there's nobody with me anymore and we're just running this race. So I'm going with the Holy Spirit telling us to go. And if he tells me to turn this way, I'm turning. As fast as he tells me to turn. To divorce the truth. Um, what was I saying before I interrupted myself? You're going to give away the secret of how you hear it? Yes. <laughs> and now that these fighter planes... It's not going to be a secret anymore. Yes. Yeah. Not going to be a secret anymore. Yesterday, as you were preaching, the Lord said, Don't compare yourself more. He so said, We can be so comparative one more. Don't compare yourself more. Mark is a, is a B 52 bomber. Try to blow things up. Like, <laughs> And he says, And then he showed me a fighter plane. These jets. And this fighter plane jets go, <laughs> and take things out. The bombs go, boom. <laughs> Blows everything out. It's too much. You all ran. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, we are all in a place where we're learning, and there's aspects of Jesus is growing in us, going into the fullness. But we can't compare with one another if we are not the same. Yeah. yeah. All right. So when you see me, you're like, oh, I want to be like Hendrik. No, you want to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. The only parts of Hendrik would like to look like Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so, in a fighter plane these days, I had a dream. They have these new high technology hats. Do you know how they work? The plane, the, the fighter sits in the plane, he sees another airplane that side, he sees it, and as he sees it, he thinks about it. The, the bullets or the, the, the mechanisms of the gun changes in the direction, or the plane changes direction and shoots at that plane. Where he looks, he shoots. 
It doesn't have to think about changing the plane that way. What it thinks happens. If I think about you, I know about you. That's how pretty it is. And all I have to do is just, I sit back and I relax, I go into rest, and who I am in Christ, and I immediately hear. Immediately. And what we're going to do in our activation sessions is I don't want you to be afraid. I want you just to go into rest. Get out of trying. We forget that you're already in Christ. Now, all we want to get to you is to understand what's already there. And the way to get there is to stop trying. Go into rest. The word for the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos, is the one that comes alongside. I learned something else also in the Lord's ministry to one of us. I learned a lot of stuff. I learned the spirit of the sermon before I even came close to prophecy. And as I was in this place, um, I wrote about that again. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, come on, sons. In Africa, we get the whole country gets rain. Glorify you, and all the sinners will say, Oh, God is good. It will be soft, it will be gentle, it will not be a, a verb. Streaming everything. Okay, so what, what we want to do is we want to get in a place of rest where the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos, comes alongside. The Paracletos means the one comes alongside. All you do is you step one step back from yourself. And then suddenly what happens, the spirit that is in you comes out of you. And takes, you. And it takes the controls and you're like, where are we going, Holy Spirit? He's good. And if you sense it, if you go with him, that's it. It's you, but it's him. It's him, but it's you. And that's the kind of Blake says something amazing. And when I heard that, I was like, so amazing. If I have this table, and I want to pick up this table, we will understand this. So, you see how difficult it is to pick up that table? Because it's off balance, and I'm trying to get the whole thing myself. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the table on that side. You take, you pick up this table. See how easy it is. God doesn't do things by himself. And I'm not supposed to do things by myself. <laughs> we put it together. We're doing it together. All right. I'm not real. The gift is when he picks it up for you. Hey? Gift is when he picks it up for you. Yes. Yes. So God wants to teach us to pick it up together. Yeah. Now the gift is one. I had an experience which is quite amazing. We went deep slur praying for a sick person, for sick people. Who wants to go with us to deep slur and pray for sick people? We are right here in the corner. We go out to the townships to pray for the black people. And we are exercising our gift. And then we can... Learn to do that in your workplace also because sometimes you have to get overcome. And if you are willing, tell me about it. We're going out, we're going to pray for people. Come on. All right. Anyway, so this one lady, Martha, she told us about praying for a guy who was blind in the one eye. Now, we are believers. We've never heard of these miracles. So I'm like, wow, I want to hear from Martha's mouth. Because you know, we, we hear these things, but we don't believe them. That's how hard we are in believing. That was unbelievable. It's only unbelievable. So I went to Martha. I said, Martha, what happened? He said, Well, I put my eye on my hand on his eye, and as I took the hand away, it was bloodshot. His dead eye was bloodshot. And, uh, and I said, well, What's going on? Put your hand back. So she put her hand back, and as she took it away, there was a new people in the eye. Come on, Jesus. Oh, yeah. As I'm hearing this, my faith went <laughs> straight to the roof. And something happened in my spirit. I suddenly felt it like. That's what I felt. I can just explain it a little bit. I tell you now what the Lord showed me. So we went out and let's go pray for the sick people. And I went out and prayed for people. And everyone I prayed for got healed. One, yeah. lady, one. one lady, she had uh, her husband came to call us. And she said, Please, my, my wife is very sick. She was heavily breathing. And me and uh, Avril went in, we laid hands on her, and it was five seconds. Not long, massive warfare prayers, nothing. 
Five seconds, be healed in Jesus' name. And the breathing calmed down, the sweating stopped, the, the fever was broken immediately, and she was instantly healed. Two weeks later, we went back to her, we asked her, how are you doing? Then we realized she has been like that for eight weeks. We thought it's just a little bit, she doesn't feel very well, but the both of her feel better, but she was like that for eight weeks. Sure. But from there, I went to another land, she had a, like a noise in her ear that was going to for two years. And I prayed for her, and that noise went away. There was a lot of demonic things that was in the people. A lot of people were set free, stomach pains, a lot of witchcraft. They were all set free. Right. And as I'm driving back, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I love him so much. Because he brings things up. This is what you call a gift. I call it blessed. Listen to this. What you call a gift, I call a place. The gift is only the ability to enter the place. So if I have the, it's very, smart, it's very simple. You have to just learn to who you are in Christ, and as soon as you are there, you can flourish. Yeah. It's not about trying to get people here. Getting to the place of who you are in Christ, that moment, you can flourish. That moment you hear, that moment everything is possible. So it's not about trying to get a gift of healing and getting people here. The gift is only your ability to know, oh, this is my place in Christ. And as soon as you're in that place, life flows. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. That's right. That place is love. That's right. That place is love. That's where everything comes from. That's where everything comes from. Okay. Hallelujah. God, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Isaiah 50 verse 18. I want to just encourage you to show you in the Word and give you faith. For those who have been... I deal a lot with people. People would say to me, now, I'm not angry at God. The Holy Spirit shows me that I'm very angry at God. And I spoke to some of you right now, earlier, and as I spoke to you, you said to me, I realized I was angry at God. We are bitter towards God. When stuff has happened in our lives, and we became bitter towards Him. And as soon as you get bitter, like God, where were you? And this stuff happened. And that moment, Satan has lied to you, he's cutting you off from God, so that you're going to leave God. Why? I'm going to hear a lot now, hearing this God. Now I'm in a place where the Holy Spirit wants to deal with that. He shows me rejection. And that's interesting. Get a word of knowledge right here on my elbow. So in my spiritual body, I get a pain in my elbow, and this means rejection. Now I know that I've developed it over time. So what happens, you have a relationship with Jesus, and as you develop your relationship with him, you get to know, because I was sitting here, just to share with you, I was going to show you my son's nose wants to bleed. And I was starting to feel the pressure in my nose. Clearly I could feel the bleeding, because what happened the other day, his nose started bleeding, and because of the low platelets and cancer, the doctors say, you will bleed to death. Right? So I cancelled that just yet because I knew there was this thing in the spirit coming towards my son. I cancelled it and I continued it on. But the Holy Spirit told me about it while I was sitting there. This is now, I've now seen it about three times. But I wasn't studying it was there before. I've never had it before, but the Holy Spirit's coming to tell me the son is going to attack me. And I'm like, whoa, you're not coming close to my son. I wore it off. Because I know what's going on in the spirit all the time. It's good. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Woo! Jesus. Get ready. Isaiah 50 verse 18. <coughs> Therefore the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you. Therefore he lifts himself up, that he may have mercy on you, and show loving kindness to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. 
blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are all those who wait for him, who expect and look and long for him, for his victory, his favor, his love, his peace, his joy, his matchless, unbroken companionship. It's such a powerful word that the Amplified uses. Unbroken companionship. You have a companion that's unbroken companionship. It can never be broken. No. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Oh, praise you for the rain. Thank you, Jesus. It's just his love. He's just pouring out his love. I've seen this a lot of places where I start preaching. It starts raining. I've honestly seen this a lot of places. I don't know, I was sharing those righteousness in a car, and the rain would literally come up and start raining. Because God's raining down His righteousness. Mm, gosh, I can tell. Jesus. So God says He's looking, He's longing, and He's expecting for you. He's not saying, When are you going to come? He's expecting, He's lying for you. A lot of people pray and they say, Well, oh, I'm waiting for God to answer me. It's not true. God's waiting for you to get into your place. That's the whole problem. Because you are thinking God is holding out on you. But my son, I said, Lord, my son is healed. And when you hear it's not healed, you don't see it yet. But my son is healed. Finish. I can't move from that. That's right. If my wife is afraid, I can't move from that. Nice word. I will stand on that. That's right. And um, so he said to me, I'm not holding out on your son's healing. Satan is trying to push you from believing that it's done. That's right. That's exactly right. That's it. And as long as you start to persevere and Satan see that he cannot push you anymore, it's broken. That's right. Um, my son is healed. That's right. Yes. That's right. Walk. Walk you walk. Walk and complete. Eh? And walk. And walk. No down syndrome, nothing. Completely whole. Completely whole. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Blake, for a guy, he was 28, walking his own, down syndrome. And normally, when you're that age, you've developed already, and you're down syndrome now for life. He prayed for him for two years, and there was no trace of down syndrome. His eyes moved, his ears moved, his brain was changed, his DNA was changed, completely restored. That's right. That's our God. We've limited him. Mark never spoke about it, but it's amazing. The word healing in, the, in Isaiah 53 verse 6, by his stripes you are healed. That's a very powerful word there, which is actually called homes. We spoke about homes, and that word there for healing is homes. It's complete restoration. God doesn't just forgive your sin. He even washes away the consequences of the sin. Amen. 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 Complete redemption. Complete redemption. He reverses the curse completely, and whatever you've done wrong, whatever the locusts have stolen over so, many, so much time, you restore to you. That verse we've always said, God can restore what the locusts have stolen. That's right. You've misunderstood it. It means you've completely covered your sin, it's completely taken away the consequences, and he's given it. Back. Amen. That's my God. That's right. We called for a lady in 2012. And as I'm hearing these things, I'm praying for this lady. And the one lady came up to me, Almary, uh, and she said, Please pay for me for money for a pain Because she wanted money to pay for a pain And I said, You'll never need pain in your life again. And I turned around and I walked around. I didn't say in the name of Jesus. I didn't pray for her. As a matter of fact, I didn't at that stage even realize my thought. I just knew the righteousness of Christ. Yeah. And as I walked out, the next day I got a phone call from her. And she says, you know what happened this morning? I woke up. I had pains morning. I, I had to hold on to things. I had no balance. I was perfect for you. Amen. I said, what is wrong with you? I had multiple sclerosis for 13 years. She was instantly. One year later, 
you have to go for a bone density test called chakra talk. As you go for the test, the cortisone that you used for 15 years had completely deteriorated the bones over that 30 years. When they tested her to see the bone density, it was 100%. Oh, that's right. Sure. Oh, hallelujah. 